go ahead and do 1.3 modeling with linear functions. And remember, the first three letters of function is fun. So good times right here. Remember, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Okay, you did a lot of that in Algebra 1, where m is your slope, also known as your rise over run, or your change in y, delta y, over change in x, delta x. Also called your rate, okay, a lot of different names, rate of change. Um, b is your y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, okay? And so if you think back to um, algebra, you spent a lot of time there. Now another thing we did in algebra is we found out that the, to find the slope given two points, let's say we're given, um, say, coordinates like 4, 2, and um, negative 1, 7. Okay, and we were to label these x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. Given two points, you can use what's the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you can plug in those different points into like seats on a on a roller coaster, a math roller coaster here. Okay, we could uh, x2 and y2, so we have negative 1 and 7 and x1 and y1, or 4 and 2 here. Okay, and when we find our slope, we get 5 over negative 5, which in this case just happens to be negative 1. Okay, and so um, that is a slope, give, finding the slope using two points. Now we can take this, this formula for slope, and we can put it over here and say, well, if I just have if I'm given a point, so for instance, x1, y1, and a slope, like m, I can use my formula that I had for, for the slope formula, and I can manipulate it a bit by, say, getting rid of the fraction. I'll my, multiply this over to the other side, this whole chunk. So I now have m times x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. And since I'm not given a second y value, I'm just given a first y value, what I'll do in this one, I'm only given one point. I'm going to get rid of these twos. Okay? And so what that allows me to do then is it allows me to write an equation given a slope. And let's just make up some points here. Let's say our slope is 3. And our coordinate is 4, um, 2. Okay? We use the same coordinate we had over there uh, with a slope of, of 3. So we'll go ahead and put m in as 3. We have x minus x1, which is 4, equals y minus y1, which is 2. That is the actual equation. Now, you can leave it in that form and know just know looking at it that, hey, my coordinate is 4, 2, and my slope is 3. Or if you want, you could always change the slope-intercept form by distributing 3x minus 12 equals y minus 2, and then moving the 2 over so you get 3x by adding 2 minus 10 equals y, and rewriting it as y equals 3x minus 10. And now you're back to slope-intercept form from point slope form. So just some quick review of algebra there. All right, some linear review. Now, some other things we need to know about this for this section is a scatter plot. A scatter plot is when you take and you just have a bunch of points on a graph. And we're going to see some of these. So let's say I just have some random points on a graph. Okay, that is a scatter plot. All right, now we have a scatter plot and by, I'm trying to make it so that with that scatter plot, we can kind of see a, a trend here. So a line of best fit would be a line, whoa, did not mean to do that, a line that tries to split those points. There's actually a formula you can use, but it kind of splits those points in half where you have um, as many of the points as close to the line as possible and as many uh, kind of an equal number below and above the line. And there, there's a way to figure that out using um, 
uh, uh, statistics, but we're not going to get into that quite a bit. Okay, but that would be your line of best fit, also known as a um, also known as linear regression when you're dealing with a calculator, which we'll see here in a minute. And the equation of this line is actually called your regression equation. So if you can figure out the equation of this line of best fit, that's our regression equation. And the the closer all these points are to that line, that's called your correlation coefficient, also known as R. And we're going to see those in our next uh, piece here. So I've got a table here graphing a scatter plot and a line of best fit using Desmos. Now, in class, I show how to use the TI-83 or TI-84 plus calculator because really that's what you can use on College Board, your SATs and stuff like that. But another great tool is Desmos, and it's free and it's online. And so we're going to use Desmos on this, okay? And so what I'm going to do, I, I've copied all this down. So this is data you want. And I'm going to take that data, and I am going to open Desmos. So I'm going to get out of this slideshow here. Okay. And I'm going to go into go ahead and go into the internet and get Desmos pulled up. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and go Desmos.com, and I'm just going to hit start graphing. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put in some values here. Um, I'm going to build a table, the same table I had. Okay, so if you're not familiar, you go to add item, you select table. It's going to give you this option, so X1 and Y1. So I'm just going to put in that same table that I just had on let me show the slide again here that slide right there okay and so i'm not sure let's see if i can get this screen to screen here all right so we've got uh one and i'm going to tab over and five and then enter well maybe not enter maybe tab four and 18 yeah, and 12, and 17, and 16, and 32, and 18, and 36. And tab over one more, 20, and 42. Always double check your points. So 1, 4, 12, 16, 18, 20, 5, 18, 17, 32, and 42. Now, you could always see if it's linear by doing change in Y over change in X, but you'd find that this is not a perfect linear. And so, really, what I'm going to do is I am going to see what it looks like if I were to um, just plot those points. And you'll notice only one of them is showing up right now. It's right here. So I'm going to zoom out. See if I can get the – there are some of our other points. And so – we had a grand total of three six points, and there are six points right there. Now, the cool thing here is it looks like it's a positive correlation, which would mean it has a, uh, a line could kind of split that and have a slope in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little more there. And I'm going to go ahead and see how, how good of a, uh, a line we can get. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a function or add an expression. I'm going to drag this. See how the, it brought me a line here. I'm going to pull this 2 up to above the 1. And I'm going to type y1. And so that's going to take y1, this, what I have it for y1s right here. And I'm going to use, um, there's a key on your keyboard right here. And you have to go to functions. Oops, I'm sorry, not functions, but your ABC. And you've got to select this little squiggly, similar-looking line. Okay. And we're going to put M. So Y equals MX sub 1 plus B. And notice what it did there. It actually, we'll hide the keyboard, it actually put in a line, a regression line. 
a line of best fit. And the other thing, cool thing it did, it actually gave us some values for M and B. It says M is 1.68199, B is 5.0964. And then it gives us an R. R is 0 0.3957. So using that information, what we actually have is what's called our regression equation. Now we could write that out. Um, let's say we round to the nearest uh, the nearest hundredth here, so two decimals. Y equals 1.68x plus 5.10. So 1.68x plus 5.10. So we'll write, I'm going to write that up here if I can. Y equals 1.68x plus 5.10. That is our equation. Now we've obviously rounded. That's the equation of the data, the line of best fit for that data. And it had an R factor. R factor, and remember R is our correlation coefficient. It had an R factor of 0 0.93, I believe. Let me just double check that there. Yeah, 0 0.9, actually 0 0.94 if you if you were to round it. Okay, and so we'll fix that up. Oh, I can't, and I can't change it, but you know what, I'll just. I'm obviously not using a pencil here, but 0 0.94. Wouldn't let me erase because I exited the slideshow. But that's a correlation coefficient. And the cool thing about the correlation coefficient, the closer this number right here is to 1, oops, the closer this number is to 1, the more perfect your line of best fit is, to 1 or negative 1. The closer it gets to 0, the worse your line of best fit is. Okay, so you want a correlation coefficient that's approaching 1 or negative 1 because that means you have a really good, you have a really good regre uh, regression equation. Your line matches up these points really well. Notice this line hits 1, 2, 3 of our points and almost it kind of splits those two in half. That's why it's so close to 1. We have that, we have that value right there, that 0 0.94, that's that's pretty darn good. All right, there's a lot of other cool things you can do with this, um, but that's all we're going to do. Okay, very good. That is uh, dealing with modeling with linear functions and using Desmos for it.